Erica Bernstedt caught COVID-19 back in March 2020, forcing her to miss six months of work. Ever since, she's struggled to resume her former life thanks to long-term symptoms like headaches and fatigue. Long COVID's robbed me pretty much of everything that I love in my life. Uh, my friendships, my hobbies, my desire to travel, my career aspirations. It's put literally brakes on everything. Beyond her own personal health problems, Erica's concern about coronavirus makes her fear for other people's futures. I wouldn't say stay at home and lock the doors and don't go outside, but just be aware that it's there because the impact it has on your life is, 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 is forever lasting. I don't know if I'm ever going to fully recover from it. For billions of people, the World Health Organization warnings about COVID-19 in early 2020 marked the start of a new era. It is COVID-19. An unprecedented pandemic that filled hospitals, killed millions and ravaged economies. Three years on and many Western nations are notionally back to normal. In cities like London, commuters no longer wear medical masks and businesses have stopped requesting proof of vaccination. But in countries like China, a relaxation of government restrictions in response to public protests has seen mortality rates rise once more. Health experts say an end to the WHO's emergency status, particularly in places where vaccines have yet to penetrate, may have serious consequences. In other parts of the world, we could see with low vaccination rates, uh, with weaker health systems, with fewer healthcare professionals, that overall there are going to be more deaths, there are going to be more complications um, and, and a larger disease burden. As authorities continue to ease rules once introduced to safeguard lives, any change in label may do little to combat a continuing threat to life. Villa Marks, Al Jazeera.